Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, we have a very exciting keynote now, and um, it's all about uh, social media for social good. Uh, I'd like to invite to the stage uh, Luciano Huck, uh, TV host and pre president of Instituto Criar, uh, Pete Cashmore, founder and CEO of Mashable, and Ronaldo Lemos. He's the co-creator of Overmundo and the uh, director of uh, the Center for Technology and Society at Fundação Getúlio Vargas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here uh, in this beautiful morning. Unfortunately, we are inside the hotel, not being able to enjoy the day outside. But it's great to have you both here. And I look forward to a nice conversation. So I have a few questions for you. Uh, uh, the first set of questions will be for both. And then in the end, we will ask like, probably one specific question for each. If you can keep the, the answer short, we have only uh, 25 minutes. So the first thing I would like to ask uh, is what is the most innovative thing that you've been doing as part of your work? So basically, tell us a little bit about the work you've been doing and what do you think is really the most innovative thing that we should be paying attention to? Uh, well, so, so for those who don't know, um, I founded uh, Mashable, which is an uh, online magazine covering everything that's happening in technology and social media. It's about 20 million uh, readers a month. Um, and we're all about how innovation is changing everything. It's changing every industry. We're in the middle of the information revolution, and uh, it's really revolutionizing every industry. So we really cover that. How does it change your life? How can you use these tools in your own life? How can you use it in your business? And how can you use it to, to make the world a better place? So some of the really innovative things we do at Mashable, and perhaps the, the core innovation that, that we've really uh, worked on is, you know, we're all about this, uh, you know, we have this big community team at Mashable that goes out in the social networks, finds out, you know, what do people mm -hmm. want us to talk about, creating that feedback loop. So a lot of our stories come from the social networks. Um, but also, a hu we get a huge amount of reach on social networks because we really try and engage the audience, and our audience is really our marketing. You know, we don't spend anything on marketing, but all our reach is about people retweeting, resharing on Facebook. Um, so it's really about that connection with the audience and, and having an audience that's really engaged. That's great. Luciano. In English. It's whatever you like. Ooh. They told me to speak in English, but I think you're free. Okay, no. I've, I was thinking about speaking in Portuguese, but let's try. Sorry, I missed some cla English classes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as you don't have any translation, I, I think your Portuguese is not good enough, Pete. Your yet. English is probably better than my okay. Portuguese. Uh, <laughs> basically, what I think I'm doing on this stage uh, in this morning, uh, I have a big window. That is mm -hmm. my TV show in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, very curious about social networks and been using this tool a lot to help me find people around Brazil for the TV show and how to get connected with them. Mm -hmm. And the biggest... Como é que fala protagonista? Protagonist. <laughs> the biggest protagonist of my, my TV show is ordinary people. So the people that are on the social networks, mm -hmm. are on the internet and write letters and all the stuff. And so I do this to try to inspire people with their own stories. So I've been traveling all over Brazil in a very special time life of Brazilian history that it's, everything is changing a lot and trying to find examples that can inspire people uh, using this big window that is the, the TV show. Yeah, that's great. So one thing that is maybe sometimes not obvious to people is the connection between media and information and sustainability. And you both work uh, with both traditional media and new media. And it would be great uh, to hear what is your take 
for instance, regarding the role of information for shared responsibility, for improving social choices? What do you think is the role of media and information for that? So I think, you know, social media for us is all about empowerment, right? If mm -hmm. people want to change something, they often feel disempowered, especially with very big problems. And we've seen with social media, especially in 2011, where people have said, you know, they're really, you know, when they've been unhappy about the situation in their own countries, they've been able to unite. And in, in many cases, you know, there's been revolutions happening as a result of social media. And I think... Um, you know, in the sustainability question, it's, it's kind of the same thing. We can feel a bit powerless. We look at the size and the scale of these issues. Um, global climate change is such a massive thing to tackle. We look at what's happening at, at this conference and we say, wow, we, we really don't feel like there's enough progress being made. And, you know, something like social media lets us all come together to feel like we're part of a larger movement and, you know, makes the individual feel like we can actually make a difference because we can see that millions of other people are doing it too. Mm -hmm. And more than that, I think that the sustainabil sustainability, uh, yes, it uh, uh, is the uh, is a issue that put everybody together in the same page, and the social networks, uh, everyone can feel that can be part of it and try try to trans transform something, and uh, Brazil, I have a Pete have a relationship with the the, the social networks social media all over the world. I specifically in Brazil. And I think Brazil have a, a very special char the, the characteristic that the people here uh, are very effective and very social. Uh, that's why I think uh, Orkut that became something only in, in Brazil and Facebook and Twitter are so strong here. Uh, the people are using the social networks as part of their, their like, like they speak, they are writing, they're being part of all this transformation. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. And actually, you both are celebrities, not only in the traditional media, but also in new media. I think Luciano has five million followers on Twitter. You should be about like three million or something, yeah. mashable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that, that is a great thing. So my next question is, we are living in the age of transparency. So basically, transparency is one of the values of this new century. Brazil has just passed its uh, Freedom of Information Law, which comes actually late. What do you think is the role of transparency for all that? Does it help improve the problems we are dealing with at Rio Plus 20? Or do we need the people in the middle so that they can actually know what to do with so much information that comes out of transparency? Well, I think it absolutely does matter. I mean, democracy is about representing your people, and if there's layers between you and, and the people, there's, there's less communication there. So what social networks do is give us a direct channel to people to say, you know, we're not happy about something, or we think, you know, something should be done differently. So I think social media absolutely has created a more transparent society. And I think, you know, while there's obviously... On an individual level, that does create problems with privacy, right? Because we're so transparent that everyone knows everything about us all the time, but... Uh, on the whole, I think it's fundamentally a good thing because it keeps people honest and there's, there's more mm -hmm. of a feedback loop for, for individuals to get involved. Mm -hmm. and for me, the most important is that you, can, you give voice to everyone. Uh, just to make an example that I think it's good, how do I deal with it and how can I try to inspire people? I think, uh, okay, it's very important, the document that you're going to have here after Rio Plus 20 and all the, the, uh, the chief of states that are going to be here. But for me, the most important thing that is happening is that everybody's connected, all the NGOs, all the people discussing uh, 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 how the world will be in the mm -hmm. next 20 years or 100 years. And sometimes I think we, we, we think too big and forget to, to think about small things that happen day by day. Just to bring one example that two weeks ago I reached uh, the history of a, a woman in Espiritu Santo, Dona Ercilia, that mm -hmm. I, I reached her through the social networks. And can you put the picture of her if you don't mind? I have a, yes, this is her house. Uh, her house is in, in Nova Aldeia. This is 20 minutes from Vitoria, Espírito Santo, and she arrives in, in, from Minas Gerais in Espírito Santo 10 years ago, 2002, so we are talking about this century, and she arrived with two kids, his husband, right. her husband, 
and just uh, 20 packages of sugar and no, no money, zero money. And she starts, uh, she didn't know how to, como é que fala no alfabeto? Illiterate. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and she starts uh, living about taking out garbage from the beaches. And one day she found two books on the, the beach. And there's another picture with the whole family. And she decided that she needed to learn how to read, to read that books. And now, uh, eight years after that, she passed to the university, the Federal University of uh, Espírito Santo. And she will be in the next years, uh, uh, como fala? Uh, restauradora. Um, This is a hard question, huh? Restorer. Maybe. So, Maybe. What? <laughs> 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 this is ridiculous. <laughs> My English is terrible. My English is terrible. But anyway. uh, so, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we are thinking too big, and the uh, book that you throw away or give connection to people by internet can really change life like. Ercilia, that now will be now she's part of the society and not she's living only about taking out trash of the beaches. And I think this kind of things that touch me that can inspire people all over. Yeah, that's great. We we got a question from Twitter. Um, the question says, how can we use uh, social media to actually continue the conversations that are happening here at Rio Plus Twenty? So. So I think what's really key is, you know, when you're using social media is to have some kind of common, I mean, it's very easy for tweets to get lost or for, you know, if you're posting individually on Facebook or whatever for it to get lost. I think there needs to be some kind of organizing function. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. we have the Rio Plus social hashtag. I'm sure, you know, Facebook groups will form and that people will create lasting hashtags that they keep using over time. Because it's really about everyone having a way to coalesce and come around as a group. Versus, you know, everyone just putting out their tweets out there and them getting lost. So I think definitely, like, organization, groups, hashtags, like, keeping all the conversation in one place. Mm -hmm. I so. agree. I think the, the, the people, we are in a room with 500 people, but millions are connected and they feel that they are part of it and they have, they can give their opinion, good and bad, and make the discussion, discussion uh, go over this 25 minutes that we have here. Sounds good. Uh, I have a specific question for Luciano, which is, what do you think is the role of Brazil globally in, for instance, uh, what are the expectations regarding the role of Brazil for development, for sustainability? Do you think our country can play a role in the global scenario in these discussions? Yes, I do, but I think we have lots of work to do here in Brazil first, everybody is, is the biggest, the big target in Brazil now is the middle class. Uh, and in Brazil, to be middle, the class have to <laughs> get much better. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I think we have lots of uh, homework to do here. To, we are talking about Rio, Sao Paulo, but when you travel around Brazil and you go like to Pará, that I saw the picture over there a few minutes ago, uh, we have a big, big uh, step between the, the rich and the poor, and we have to, to make this, this balance better. We have to work hard inside Brazil, mm -hmm. and this will, will allow Brazil to, to be in the world scenario with much more uh, strong uh, power. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And I have one for you, Pete. Um, a lot of the debate about sustainability is also about innovation. So people think that, uh, for instance, research about energy efficiency yeah. or genetic engineering and so on uh, can actually help to build a more sustainable society. So what, what's your take regarding the connection between innovation and sustainability? So I think a few things. I think uh, innovation is definitely the way we get out of this, or one of many ways that we get out of this. It's very hard to convince people that they need to consume less stuff than they already are consuming, that they need to stop driving everywhere and burning fossil fuels. And it's very, very challenging, but if you can offer alternatives that let people to continue to live similar lives and also live sustainably, then 
uh, you know, innovation really provides that path. I mean, we're seeing a great deal of innovation uh, actually in Silicon Valley where, you know, we have a lot of electric car companies springing up. A lot of the funding that used to go to internet startups is now going to bigger and bolder projects. The VCs getting involved in things like electric cars, alternative energy sources. Um, so it's a big boom business in California. And you know what? Whoever solves this problem is going to be the richest person in the world. So there's a big, it's not as if uh, there aren't, you know, capitalistic motivations for people in Silicon Valley to solve this problem because it's the biggest problem the world faces and whoever solves it will be providing a bigger solution than, than Bill Gates did or Steve Jobs did with, with innovations in the computer industry. It's a huge opportunity and I think a lot of entrepreneurs are really excited about innovating our way out. Mm. Uh, and Luciano, you have a, a very important work at Instituto Criar. Uh, in which you actually teach the basic skills for people to use audiovisual tools in order to participate in the market or in civil engagement. Do you think the fact that social media is a two-way uh, communication pattern, do you think that is important? How, how do you improve the skills of people to actually engage in civic life and discuss the issues we are discussing here? Yeah, I think tradition in Brazil, it was always the rich filming the poor people. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do there is to give another point of view of the same history. So we are working hard in the, in the unemployed for the youth, so to get uh, people know uh, something, a profession, uh, what do you call a profession? Uh, profession. profession. Yep. Mm -hmm. And more than that, to give like the periferia mm -hmm. uh, here their own point of view about their history. And I think it's, it's working because we've been doing it for the last 10 years and uh, the families that we are working for, with, they came, the kids, they came from family with renda uh, per capita in, in incomes, mm -hmm. like $150 a month. And now all the students that uh, have been working with us, 80% of in the formal uh, professional market uh, with incomes around 500 bucks. So, uh, uh, we are we are trying to to give their the tools to have their own point of view, and uh, we changed the name of the institute five years ago. It was only uh, cinema and television, and now it's cinema, television, and new media's, and it's working really well with the kids to broadcast, like streaming and everything. So. Mm -hmm. It's working. That sounds great. Uh, and actually, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, the idea of peripheries, of peripheries. And I, I think peripheries. The, no, peripheries. Yeah, well, let's yeah. use peripheries because there's no perfect <laughs> translation, but okay. I think it's easier to, to understand that. But that's I'm feeling also like an Indian talking in English here. <laughs> okay, I think away, but they don't. Okay. But come on, it's. Both are good words. Uh, it's good. it's interesting, but th this connects also to innovation in the sense that uh, formerly uh, innovation used to come mostly from the center, and now there is all this discussion about open innovation and innovation coming from the peripheries. So, what's your take on that? Uh, well, piece? so I think. When you define innovation, when you define ideas, I think people have this, this concept about ideas that, you know, someone smart sits in a room and suddenly goes, you know, I have a great idea, and it suddenly comes, comes around. I think the way ideas really work is by combining two things that already exist, right? That's where all new, there are no new ideas. They're just combinations of things that already exist. Mm -hmm. You know, people from different backgrounds coming together and finding solutions or, you know, a solution coming from a completely different industry or a different part of the world. So... The more people interact and the more people are empowered to share their problems and share their solutions, then the more innovative the world will be. So all this social media is speeding up innovation dramatically because you have more ideas colliding every day. It might seem like, you know, it's a very small thing to update, you know, Twitter or something. But, you know, if that combines with someone else's ideas, uh, then it's really powerful. So I think that's always been... Uh, the seat of innovation is, is ideas combining, and the more people who have a voice, the more ideas and the more innovation we'll have. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So we have only two more minutes, and I would like to ask uh, one final question, which is, what is the most important challenge that you believe we will have in the next 10 years? It's a futurology question, I know, but I think it's interesting to see what's uh, your per perception about what's to come. So. What do you think? One minute. 
So clearly, I mean, the biggest issue uh, that we're seeing in technology is energy, mm -hmm. right? How do we, you know, how do we stop burning fossil fuels and, you know, and the usage is going up exponentially and how do we find alternative sources um, that are sustainable and that's just a huge challenge. It's going to be a challenge throughout our lifetimes um, and it, it really needs solving now, so that's, that's obviously the biggest challenge. Luciano. For me, I have, it's hard to, to think global. I think what I do in life, the TV show I go, everybody opens the door for me to get inside the houses all over Brazil. And I think the goal for me and for Brazil for the next 10 years, and if you can have all the population living in decent homes, with decent food, with decent school, with distant uh, hospitals and healthcare, so... Uh, as I told here before, I, have, I think we have lots of homework to do here in Brazil. Uh, uh, and the good things that we can uh, make Brazil a better country to live for everyone uh, with sustainable issues inside this education programs and everything. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Please help me thank uh, our invitees uh, for this great talk. Thank you. Muito obrigado.